just admit, though, that it's been a tough few years for you. You've seen your market share fall from nearly 90% from its peak in 2008. What went wrong? So, for, you know, I, I, I'm always excited to be part of this industry. I'm proud to be part of this industry. This is a really exciting industry to be in, and we're at the, the verge of a major change towards this mobile computing, and we think BlackBerry 10 is going to power us through the next 10 years. So but we're really excited. No, fu fundamentally, this is a, a great market, and I think, you know, we've been brave. We've tried lots of things. We were at the start of the smartphone business, and we're, we're really now at the cusp of the change of this market now. And the uniqueness around BlackBerry 10, we've taken the decision to build our own operating system. And that gives us the ability to control this brand new user experience that we'll be talking about this afternoon. But you still haven't told me what went wrong. This is a, this is a phenomenal market. We're, 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 you know, we're, we're brave, we're out there, we're pushing it. We've, we've transitioned um, um, and, and are supporting a business uh, in the consumer world, in the business world. And for us, what's important is ensuring that we deliver a great, unique experience to those 79 million customers out there and all the other BlackBerry users that we think we'll get. OK, Stephen. We might never know what went wrong, but anyway, thanks very much no for your time. Thank you. To what would you attribute this uh, bigger than expected loss? Well, first of all, we have to look at what we have achieved this year. I think that's most important because this is the first year of our operation. We have integrated these two very large companies. We have ended up with a profitable business, a cash-rich business. We have ended up with very much significantly higher customer satisfaction. We have launched our world brand on the stage. We launched it at the Turin Olympics since Lenovo was a worldwide partner. We have also launched a whole set of new products called the Lenovo 3000, specifically to address the small business market. Now, now we did announce this restructuring in March, uh, and we are on track to achieve the $100 million of saving we announced in the second half of the year and the run rate of $250 million, which we needed to do as a part of our integration in order to get fit. And joining me now is the Secretary of Health and Human Services, Alex Adar. Uh, Secretary Azar, welcome to Meet the Press. And let me start with just a simple first question. Why are we failing uh, in the fight against COVID-19 when so much of the rest of the world seems to be succeeding right now? Well, Chuck, let's talk about what we know, which is that we're seeing surging in cases in counties, especially in, south in the southern parts of the United States. Um, we've gotten reports from our governors that the majority of the positive cases we're seeing are age 35 and under. A large number of those are going to be asymptomatic. Uh, we've got our fatality rates and our hospitalization rates are the lowest they've been in two months. But this is a very serious situation. What are we doing about it? We're surging in working with our local authorities and states. This is a county by county issue. So getting in there and getting to the bottom of why we're seeing cases surging. Hathaway, good morning. Nice to see you. Good morning, Matt. Seen a lot of you lately. <laughs> Sorry uh, about that. You were. <laughs> I, I, I'd be happy to stay home, but uh, the film. <laughs> Let's just get it out of the way. You had a little wardrobe malfunction mm. the other night. What's the lesson learned from something like that, other than that you keep smiling, which you always do? Well, it was obviously an unfortunate incident. Yeah. Um, I think it kind of made me sad uh, on two accounts. One was that. I was very sad that we live in an age when someone takes a picture of another person in a vulnerable moment and rather than delete it and do the decent thing, sells it. And I'm sorry that we live in a culture that commodifies sexuality of unwilling participants, which brings us back to Les Mis, exactly. because that's what my character is. She is someone who is forced to sell sex to benefit her child because she has nothing and there's no social safety net. And I, yeah, so... Um, so let's start, so let's this get back to the most <laughs> creative turns of a question I have ever heard, and I'm going to take it at that. That's fine. Now you've worked in many different parts of the Disney business, most recently parks and consumer products, also the studio um, distribution of home entertainment. But you've not worked in the TV bundle business, the part of the business that is suffering from the cord cutting trends, um, which I've talked to Bob Iger about many times over the past several years. As someone who has not worked in that business, what's your outlook to the threat of cord cutting and how to handle it? Well, to me, the, the, the commonality between uh, our businesses are as our consumer. And I've worked in consumer businesses my entire career. And it's not ironic that our strategy 
for the media business now is a direct-to-consumer business where we have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with our customer without necessarily having a lot of middlemen in between. That's my sweet spot, and I think that is something that I could leverage now throughout all my experiences, not only at Disney, but even before Disney, in terms of figuring out how we take the data, the information, the technology, and once again, our storytelling, right direct to the consumer so that we can take all the great equities that we have and continue to build those for our shareholders. What do people do? I mean, is it safe to go out looking for work? If you've got to stay at home and we're hearing about all these companies that are hiring, the, the Amazons, the, the CVSs, the, the, the Walmarts, is it safe to go out to look for work? Look, this is key. It is not an ideal time to be out in the public right now, but we understand the reality is there are companies that are hiring pizza delivery companies in addition to the groceries and pharmacy chains that you mentioned. Fresh Direct hiring 300,000 people. If you find yourself needing to be out in public, limit contact as much as possible. Practice the social distancing. Really, you have to train yourself not to touch your face and to wash your hands often. But at the same time, there are jobs to be had. If you want to stay at home, online education companies are also hiring big. We know that stay-at-home school is here. It's probably going to last through the summer. So that's another company that you should be looking into, online educators. And I just want to mention one thing. I think this is really important. Many of us are going to be home for many months. Yeah. Uh, an online education company called Udacity is now actually offering one month free for a nano degree, which is essentially training and skills that you can get for free for a month that will help you boost your resume and get some new skills so that when the job market starts up again, you'll be able to, uh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you will be able and be ready to enter for per hopefully a job that's in higher demand as well as a job that would be higher paying. So check that out. It's free for people in Europe and in the USA. Udacity. Yes. You're Udacity. so unflappable, by the way. You handled that with just the, that was perfect. Thank you. We My needed, apologies. We needed that today. Vicky Wynn, uh, thank you. So again, I want to be very, very clear. Seven years ago, people thought that Black Lives Matter was a radical idea. And yet Black Lives Matter is now a household name and it's something being discussed across kitchen tables all over the world. Why can't we start to look at how it is that we reorganize our priorities so that people don't have to be in the streets protesting during a national pandemic? It's really in a global yes. pandemic. It's time for us to address the pandemic in our communities and that pandemic is not having the resources we need to live well. And that's not just a black problem, that's everybody's problem. Danny, I mean, this is on the front page of every business section and every major paper in this country because it will revolutionize eating if other restaurants follow your lead. Can you guarantee that it will only be a 20% increase in the menu price? Or could you go as high as 35% as some analysts are suggesting? Well, we are going to start it at 21% and try to make it work as best we can. I think it's really important, Nora, to understand that January 1st of next year, minimum wage is going to be going up yeah. everywhere. And as soon as minimum wage goes up, not just our restaurants, but every restaurant's going to have to raise their prices. That doesn't require you to eliminate tipping. But we looked at that moment in time and we said, if we're going to have to raise our prices anyway, why don't we use this opportunity to make the restaurant mm -hmm. business a much more sustainable place. And I, I just got to add one more thing. We are facing across the whole country the biggest single labor shortage in talented cooking uh, skills mm -hmm. that we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason is that if you're a young kid and you want to go to cooking school with big, big bills, how do you tell your parents, what I really want to do is go work for $11 an hour, right. or $10 an hour, or $9 an hour, and then live in a big city like New York? So for the very sustainability of the business, we think this is important.